night. <laughs>Sports fans, and welcome to the chat alongside Corey Smith. I'm Jeff Cook, and we're joined by a distinguished panel tonight from the DeLone Catholic Squires, defending district champs in baseball. And for the second night in a row, we're joined by the coaching staff, coaches Jimmy Smith and Jack Greenhold. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us. Happy to be here. As I told these players, and I'll let you introduce them in a moment, uh, last night we t- did a taping with the coaches and some of your now graduated players. And uh, that was just, I wasn't live, so, but you guys are live. So, uh, worldwide. Uh, and anyway, uh, Coach, why don't you introduce our guests here uh, tonight? All right, let me start to my left. Of course, Coach Jack, and then we have Preston Yonkins, and then we have Aiden Groft. And directly behind me, we have Matt Mummert. And beside him, we have Patrick Devine. And beside him, we have Jack Wilson. We uh, quizzed them before we came on the air. A lot of O's fans, but at least at least a couple of Phillies fans over there for the moment. Um, well, let's talk about last night we had the guys here who graduated. A lot of them are going to play baseball at the next level. Uh, what it was like to, to make it to states. And uh, uh, let's get a perspective from you for the coaches first and the, the contributions your underclassmen made, and then we'll let them share their recollections of the uh, end of the season, a 12 and seven regular season. So, I mean, that's enough to get you in the dance and then you took off from there, so. Yeah, so we ended up 15 and eight. And um, the underclassmen played a, a huge part in last year's season, filling all the gaps that from the previous season's um, seniors graduating. And uh, it all started in the weight room and getting to know each other. And of course they know each other from playing baseball outside of high school ball. A lot of them play travel ball together, um, so they're familiar with each other. Um, Coach Jack here has known most of these players since they were, you know, toddlers. So uh, he, he knows them very well. Last year, this past year, was the first year Coach Jack and I actually coached together. So we were on the learning curve together, which he brought a lot of knowledge from the underclassmen, you know, and it really helped out to help find the right spot for them on the team. You have a system, you build a program. It's, it's different from just running a team. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so um, every year uh, we have new players feeding the program, and we stay consistent, and we focus on the players. Okay, so each class helps the class beneath them. Uh, the seniors take the lead role and they show the leadership. And then we have junior class that actually, we have some captains that were juniors. And in the past, we've had some captains that were sophomores. The guys that show all the leadership skills, it's looking out for their teammates. It's helping them up. Um, They all have skills. That's what they they work on all summer long. And when they get to the high school level, we just fine tune those skills, find placements for them. And that bond, you know, that you know, the chain, you know, it's not going to break because you have so much, and you know, you got the, the leadership above, and then the underclassmen, it's just, you know. And we never know what we're going to get. Mm-hmm. So it's not like um, public schools, they, they have a lot of players. We don't have a lot of players. So we fill gaps with, with guys that uh, maybe don't think they can play that position, and, and they do the best they can. And with their help from their teammates, they fill the gap. There's an Oriole way, there's a Cardinal way, the St. Louis Cardinals, they talk about the Cardinal way, is there a Squire way, and if so, what is it, and (laughs) let the players maybe uh, chime in with what you think it it might be. That's a great idea. Anybody? Preston? I think uh, the energy we all bring together is one of the biggest ways that helped us get far. I mean, when we were up, our scores were up, if you know what I mean, so... uh, Energy was huge this season. Yeah, we talked a lot yesterday with the older guys about team chemistry, how important it is, and uh, getting along, having each other's back, uh, accountability, uh, those kind of qualities. I mean, what do you, anybody want to ch- uh, venture forth about what those qualities represented to loan? Uh, Pat? Yeah. <laughs> I think, you know, no matter what, 
you just know your guys are going to have your backs, and that's just a great feeling. Like there's a couple, there's a couple games where I went in. And, you know, it's kind of nerve wracking getting in there, especially after on the mound playing. you were pitching. Yeah, yeah. With but, your arm uh, yeah. uncertain as to how it would hold up. Yeah, but uh, it's just, it's just a great feeling knowing that no matter what you do, no matter how you do, you always have your guys and they'll be there for you and try and pull through. When you guys started the season, did you have any inkling that you would be playing in the state tournament, or is that expect, uh, expected? Wait, Coach, go ahead. I would say um, the players would say we always expect to do that. Or for it's me, a goal. For, for, for me, it, it's about competing. If we compete, we have a chance. If we don't compete, you shouldn't be there. And it all starts in practice. I mean, every team has a game where they come out flat. I mean, we had quite a few. Okay. <laughs> and those probably are some of the losses. Absolutely. I mean, and if coaches could figure it out what causes that, uh, obviously it would never happen. But, I mean, you're dealing with high school players. They have academic issues, off-the-field issues. So, I mean, like we talked about, you got to be a people person. There's a lot going on. Right. I, th I think I talked a little bit to Corey before we started here today. And one of the things I think that really helped us and the players can, you know, respond to it is, you know, we never skipped a beat with practice. So if we had a great game or we had a, a bad game, um, practices were always good. We formulated a plan. We talked about the things we need to work on. We went to the practice field and we worked on it. What's a typical practice, the routine? Can you take us through that? Players, you want to take them through? Do you do calisthenics, sprints, anything like um, that? So we're pretty consistent with our practice. You know, I feel like every day was like the same, which helped us a lot. But like our practice, we get there early. Um, before we even go up to the field, we talk about as a collective group, like what we need to get done, what our goals for every day is, and I feel like it was just a game every day that we had to win every day, and that's what we did. I mean, a lot about sports is not just raw athletic ability. It's teamwork and being smart, too. I mean, yeah. uh, we talked about working the, the pitch count, being more selective at the plate. Uh, uh, what are other ways that players can use their minds instead of just their bodies out there? These, these guys, uh, we were hurt by numbers. And there was a time we only had nine, maybe ten guys per game. And some of these fellows deserved to be the varsity, but they filled in spots in the JV just when they had a game. So, and then at times, depending on who's pitching, we had guys out of position. Yeah. And uh, that's the tough part for us to prepare those guys who normally pitch, well, they play shortstop. Now he plays center field. Mm -hmm. So we are a group of guys here are pretty versatile. And that's one goal we work on in practice, uh, to get them prepared to play spots they're not really used to playing. And they exceeded pretty well, I thought. And our record kind of showed. Yeah. yeah, we had times that, you know, the ball always finds the weakest guy. And, and, um, and that always happens. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, but our guys, you know, they, they brought their game when they had to with the best they could. And, yeah. uh, and that reflected on our, on our record, I think. So you want them to get reps at practice so they're not out there in a game for the first time at shortstop or something like that. And try to move them around where we anticipate they may play. Yeah. A couple different spots. Like their primary positions and then their alternative you know, positions. You know, if they're a shortstop, you know, maybe take some reps at second, maybe third, just because. You, you can ask this fellow here, he's all over the infield. And it's a great asset to us. We can put him in second, short, third. He even wants to pitch outfield. every once in a while. Outfield. So, I mean, we had very viable to our team. These guys, they can play just about anywhere if we ask them to. And the positive attitude. They always came with a positive attitude. And you always need, like, a utility player. Not to you know, say you're, not, you're just playing on the banks there, but a utility of just playing all sorts of positions there. Absolutely. Another Cesar Tovar. Uh, was that an MLB <laughs> guy that played every position? He played one inning at every position, including Just pitcher. About, yeah, yeah. Um, you yeah. got some. Uh, we got some guys here. Um, we said we'd take a break, so we'll take a quick break and we'll we'll incorporate them, and uh, we'll be right back here on Sports Chat. Don't go away. I I think uh, working with coaches many times. 
students learn so much more about themselves than uh, they would if they didn't have that opportunity. They learn that they, they, they can have the stamina and the courage to do things that they would not have otherwise done. Uh, particularly those in individual sports, I think they get that opportunity a lot more sometimes than they do team sports because they're alone, they're on their own. So they have to do what they need to do to have the courage to compete, compete as well as they can and to come forth with the opportunities that only they can give themselves. But that's all grounded in the, in the routine of daily practice and daily work, uh, daily sacrifice. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of sacrifice in athletics. If you really want to be good, you've got to sacrifice some things to do that. And, and that was no better brought home to me than the, the uh, summer I worked with the uh, Olympic gymnasts. I just was amazed at how hard they work. They work at least 10 hours a day. Uh, and they had a very strict diet. So they, I, and I don't see how some of them survived and what they were allowed to eat, but they weren't allowed to gain weight. So, so they, it was very, very, very strict. And so the, the courage that they had and the stamina and the, and the willingness to do what they wanted to do to see the goal, the goal, they, they knew a goal. They had a goal and they worked to the goal. And I think that's really, really important if coaches can instill a goal within students a student athlete, they can work so much harder to see the goal to become a reality. And goals are really critical. And that's why I always tried to have students in class, even if they weren't an athlete or whatever, to seek goals because I think goals guide us and guide us really in the ways we want to go. So, so having a really definite structure of life of goals really makes a difference, I think. Lefty, for those words of wisdom, and we are live from the studio with a couple of new faces here. Joined us after the Squire practice. Uh, you guys get rained on? No, uh, no, we no? just got through the rain. Beautiful. Zach Stahl is back here. He was here last night, and uh, Coach Smith, why don't you introduce the other we gentleman? Got JD Sig and then Chris Cole. JD Sig, Chris Cole, welcome. We're live worldwide, but don't be nervous. Uh, a great season last year, and uh, we, we talked a lot about uh, team spirit. Camaraderie, camaraderie is a great word. Um, some, some teams, like you'll see this even at the major league level, they leave the locker room, they go their separate ways. Uh, other times, guys hang out with each other because they like each other. I mean, how would you classify your team in that regard? I mean, we hang out all the time. I mean, after games, whether it's going to get food, going to hang out at someone's house, it's always never just ends in the locker room. We're always with each other outside of baseball. And especially these guys you play several sports with, right, if season after season. So uh, your first uh, – let's talk about the uh, – we'll ask the football players a couple of questions. Since the football season is right around the corner, so uh, who do you guys – you open with Susquehannock. Is that home or away? Home. Home. I think you guys have your own TV network. Uh, yes. yes. You do. So um, any viewers want to watch that, it's available on the Internet mm -hmm. for free? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. Uh, what's the website? It's, I mean, it's on YouTube. YouTube. It's on YouTube? Yep. Just look up the own Catholic football or something the like that? The Catholic Broadcasting Network. Okay. So anybody that wants to follow the Squires on uh, opening night, we just learned how to do it. Uh, it's hard to believe the summer is gone and the football season is, is at hand. Yeah. But now we're here talking about the baseball team. And uh, so, what, first game of districts you beat Newport 4-1? to one. Is that? I'm five just going 5-1. Yes. to one. Anybody have anything they recall of the critical moments about that game? And you can talk about the guys who were here yesterday in case they're tuning in. I'm sure they'd like to hear their names mentioned. Anybody have a clutch hit? No. To blur uh, his info. Yeah, it was, yeah, it's a long so time ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm asking a lot of tough questions here. Yeah. I guess uh, one thing I, I would ask is, what was the, the biggest highlight, you know, from this past season? You know, it could be whether a practice or a game, just, you know, kind of around the, the table there, a highlight. I'd say in the district championship, we had a couple guys 
who had been struggling to get their bats going around for most of the season. Uh, huge hits, a couple doubles, knocked a couple runs in, really gave us momentum in those games. And I'd say that really just gave us the motivation we needed to come up with that win in that game. So what about goals for next season, baseball team? Run it back. Back to back. Why not? Do it again. You think you have enough talent? Absolutely. For sure. Definitely. What about down on the farm? What do you got coming up? Ninth graders? Uh, can eighth graders play varsity? No, you have to be at least ninth grade. Any ninth graders with potential? I'd, I'd say so. Mm -hmm. One yeah. two. Now, you lost a lot of pitching uh, from the guys who were here last night. Uh, so do you have some arms coming into the picture? Yeah, definitely. Most people that <clears throat> play on the team pitch as a, one p position that they have. And I know a couple guys here pitch. Crofty pitches, Chris pitches, Jack, Matt, and Patrick. So we got six pitchers sitting right here. Yeah, so Patrick had uh, Tommy John surgery and finally made it back last year. Do you feel 100% now? Yeah. Ready to go. Ready to go. Get the jugs gun out, huh? Mm -hmm. How was uh, the recovery process during that whole duration there? You know, uh, it was it was hard mentally, but e even my sophomore season, I, I couldn't play, but I still went to every single practice. You know, every single game, I was still there for my guys. I say would do the same for me. So, you know, I was there for them. They were there for me. If I needed anything, I'd ask them. And it took a while, but eventually got there and now you know you're getting better but yeah. it's just a day at a time yeah, kind of yeah. thing now were you able to reach out to anybody else that went through a Tommy John surgery to kind of like what the timeline could be or um no but I I started working out at this place and there was a therapist there and you know I would talk to him about what I feel and what he thinks and you know, we work on my throwing progression there and stuff like that. So it was great to have him um, by my side throughout the recovery. It's not a, uh, a marathon. I mean, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon yeah. of, you know, getting back to health and all that there. Yeah. Hey, Pat, it's okay to say it was hard. Okay, we're going to go off script here. We don't have a script, but uh, a lot of Orioles fans here. Uh, favorite player? Zach? Um, Gunnar Henderson. Garner Henderson? Not an Orioles fan. <laughs> well, do you have a favorite player? Uh, I, honestly, my favorite Orioles player is probably James McCann. Pretty tough guy. James Buchanan? James McCann. Oh, McCann. Pretty I thought tough James guy. Buchanan, wasn't he the president? <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> especially McCann. after that, uh, that brick and nose. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. Still catch another eight innings afterwards. Yeah, that's, that hit. sounded pretty, like uh, Scherzer got, what, hit in the face, and, and he went out and... I mean, yeah, there are just some tough guys out there. So JD, good, good uh, choice. Uh, Preston, uh, not a catcher, but I love Adley Rutschman. All right, he's, well, he's slumping right now. A little bit, yeah, he's struggling behind the plate, but. Uh, Aiden, uh, I'm not an Orioles fan either, but I try okay. to say Gunner, Gunner Henderson. All right, yeah, I mean, I, I've said this to Corey. Uh, I, I haven't watched a lot of Orioles games, but man, they're. They're good. They're scary good. And now, uh, what, uh, Holiday's up? Holiday's up, yeah. He had a grand slam. His his first home run hit a home run against uh, the Guardians there. So it looks but like Does the, he play second base when Gunner's at shortstop, or how are they doing primarily that? Primarily, it's going to be Gunner at And they at have short. Westberg at third. Well, he's hurt. Yeah. Him, but he got hurt, so they brought up um, Kobe uh, Mayo. So it's lots of moving pieces there. But yeah. And you got Zach Eflin. How's that working out so far? Uh, doing, doing okay. You got a win. Yeah. Not a quality um, start, but a, a win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's it's a serv serviceable piece there. I mean, it's not you know what some of the O's fans were looking for, but I think it's a good you know three four in the the rotation there when you have Burns and you know Grayson Rodriguez there as well. Uh, Matt, you got a favorite player? I gotta go with Anthony Santander. Ooh. What a year he's having. Mm -hmm. Is he a switch hitter? Yeah. 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 Might hit 40. You know, it's I mean, a best switch hitter for the Orioles since Eddie Murray, would you say? Yeah, it's right up there. I mean, he's a Hall of Famer, but that's okay. Uh, that's Todd? Fantastic there. Um, I'm a huge Phillies guy, so I'll go with uh, Sir Anthony Dominguez. 
It's my favorite Orioles player. <laughs> <laughs> you can have him. No, I mean, he has some, yeah, Soto, too. You got Soto. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, he's, he's can throw a 98, but so can everybody else who pitches in Major League Baseball these days. Yeah. So um, let's see. Uh, Jack. 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 I'm going to go with uh, Colton Kowser. Yeah. Uh, you didn't start the as your, you had uh, Austin Hayes in left field, and what, Kowser eventually won the job? Mm hmm. Yep, and then Hayes went to the Phillies, and, you know, Kowser could be the uh, AO. Um, uh, rookie of the year this year, so he's a rookie. Yeah, huh. well, good choice. Uh, and let's see, uh, Chris Cole, the team's athlete. We were talking about versatility, I think, before you got here. Uh, the name Cesar Tovar, guy, the ultimate versatile player. Uh, you got a favorite player? Uh, definitely Jackson Holiday. All right. Well, I guess uh, his first time up, he seemed a little overmatched. Seemed like it a little bit there. He was, you know. It's never good when you're batting in the bingo numbers there. So yeah, yeah. Now he's, I think he's batting his weight now. So. The Mendoza line never looks so good <laughs> when you're, when he's striking, he was striking out. I mean. He was swinging at bad pitches. Trying to hit home runs. Yeah. You know. So I guess when you try to hit home runs, you don't hit home runs, right coach? And uh, sometimes when you're not trying to hit a home run, you, you do, so. You talked about launch angle. You guys actually work on that? And BP, do you have BP every day? Yeah, BP every day. We work, work more on bat on ball, football on play. Bunning? Yes. Yes. Is Huge. that part of the, the DeLong lexicon, the small ball? Small ball, yes. absolutely. I mean, it's a, kind of a lost art. Uh, and then you see what other teams' defenses are made of. So you make all those calls, coach, the bunning and the. It's baseball. It just comes natural. I mean, you know. Yeah, we, so we coach baseball. Yeah. And um, we're well, I believe we're well rounded. Yeah. Um, we put the ball in play. Make them beat you with their defense. So. That's how you have to win. You get the ball in play and see what happens. I mean, you know, you could you know, have a swinging bunt and the pitcher throws it down the, you know, the first base line and before you know, you're at second base there. So you can't win if you don't get in play. Um, you know, kind of looking at, you know, what, what's some personal goals, you know, going into the next season that, that you have? Not, you know, I want to hit, you know, 10 home runs or just something that, you know, you want to achieve, you know, in the, the 25 season there. Uh, I'd definitely like to see the team um, become like the team as last year. Everyone really bond together like we did um, and just include all the new guys but then just mainly become like one unit and not just like different sections. Yeah, like Chris said, I don't think we have an issue at all uh, gelling together as a team. Like we really went far with that, like I said earlier. So I think if we keep that going to the next season, we're going to be just fine. And you guys, we didn't really show this off uh, tonight yet. Uh, Zach, do me a favor, lift your side up there. This thing is heavy. <sighs> All right, that's, this is emblematic uh, of their championship. Oh, I'll put it down. <laughs> and then we'll do, lift up the sign here as well. Thank you, Matt. 2024 20, champions. Uh, so congratulations, guys. Um, it, this is not necessarily all about baseball. We're going to talk some other sports, Olympics. Uh, favorite Olympic moment, anybody? Hmm. I'd no say one. when that one gymnast came out and won gold, you know what I'm talking about with the glasses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. The, um, on the... Oh, uh, the guy from... Um, um, uh, it was early on in the... The, the Kosherbich or what he's Olympics the... The, yeah, yeah. the, the Palma horse guy. Uh-huh. Yeah, wrote it, he just like, nonchalantly yeah. like a day in the park, stuck it when they... What, that was when they won a, a bronze medal as a team, which they haven't done yeah. before. Great choice. Anybody else have a... Favorite Olympic moment? Definitely Noah, Noah Lyles winning 100 meter. Yeah. That was like less than, an, that was not by a by nostril, not a second, nose, yeah. it was by a nostril. I mean, uh, that was, I, I guess they have, it was what, five thousandth of a second or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. That was, uh, it was amazing. It did, I mean, he really came on at the end. Um, now, did the best, I was watching the men's basketball team and they, they had things well in hand against Brazil. 
Yeah, I is think that, they is won that the by semifinal. I believe that was the semis. I, they yeah. beat uh, Brazil. I think they were up by thirty the last time I checked there. And yeah, I mean, the, the you just, when you're able to have two units uh, as skilled as they are, and they really bought into playing defense as well, uh, they got to be the favorite. I I would have. The other semi was what, France and uh, Germany, maybe. I think it was those two. Yeah. So. The U.S. will be favored, but the French don't don't overlook them for sure. Yeah, especially uh, home court, so yeah, you never yeah. know. Uh, How that would that swimming in the Seine work out? I, I'm not sure I would want to dive into that river. They cleaned it up. Yeah, the mayor the mayor took a swim in there, so <laughs> I don't know. All right, what about football? Anybody have an NFL team that they 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 favor? Ravens, Eagles, Eagles. Titans. Eagles. Okay. What about Saquon no. Barkley? Will he be a difference maker for the Eagles? He has a good line in front of him this year, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, no. I mean, uh, Jason Kelsey. I've never seen a center pull like that and and get to the second level. Yeah. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of pressure on whoever takes his place. Mm -hmm. But then you have like two tackles that are Elaine Johnson and. Uh, the Australian rugby player. Jordan uh, Mailata, yeah. Mailata, thank you. But they didn't do a Christmas out, so. Uh, <laughs> that, that we know of. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. The tush push is still legal. And what about this uh, the kickoff, kickoff return game? That's going to be really interesting. They, what, they bought that from the, or they didn't the buy XFL. it. They, they got it from the XFL. And the kicker, they're going to kick off still from their own 40. Uh, I believe it's uh, the 35 and, 35 the, the, and the, the opposing team can't move until... They'll be tw 25 yards in front of the kicker, mm -hmm. but they can't move until the ball's caught? Yes. Uh, so you have two defenders at the end zone, yeah. um, and you get, if it goes in the end zone, the opposing yeah. team gets the ball at the 40. So, so it's, you'd be it's just kind of like more. setting up a picket fence, like, like mm -hmm. rugby, you know, spread the field, and then when they catch the ball, go... I don't know what the blockers are going to do. Where, are they, where do they go? Uh, they are five yards away from the other. You know, so it's five yards with the, the, the posing team that's getting the ball and then your, the, the kickoff team. So once the... So uh, the only one who's back at the 35 is the kicker? Yes. It, it's, it's, it's actually you know, getting used to, I'm the sure. The optics are a little different there. But, yeah. Um, well, that's just the pros. College is not doing that, as correct. far as we know. Mm-hmm. Um, so Ravens, Eagles, how many Ravens fans? That's it? The rest Eagles or the other I'm, team? I'm a Titans fan. Well, what do you, how do you like that team? Who's going to be your quarterback? I mean, they made a lot of moves, picked up a lot of defensive players, a lot of – they picked up two really good wide outs, a really good running back. So With Calvin Ridley and, you know, they got uh, – Tyler Will uh, Levis or uh, Will, Will Levis is the still going to be they there. They got somebody else. They Marcus Mariota too. Uh, Mariota is uh, with Seattle, I believe. Or, so okay. I'm excited to be let down. <laughs> it's like the slow burn there, yeah, so, you know. Yeah. I'm ready for it, but if it doesn't happen, that'd be really cool. Um, yeah, and uh, I was just going to talk about college football, and now I mean, anybody have any understanding of how this is going to work now that? College players can get paid. It was, it was one thing to have name image likeness. Now, I guess they can just be paid outright, you know? It's almost the same with uh, the NIL. Well, you know, kind of, you know, the only thing it's, you're not getting is, you know, the contract. You're not getting, you know, hey, you must stay at this college for three, four years. You know, they can just get up and go to another college. So yeah, that's, then you can uh, go, the, go into the transfer portal and not have to sit out a year as they used to have to do, so... A changing landscape for sure. Uh, I guess the preseason poll came out, Georgia number one. And I said to myself, what's more meaningless than a preseason poll? Just for people to talk and, you know, water cooler talk basically. Hey, that team should be higher because, you know, it's, it's you know, just all mm -hmm. what people perceive and all that there. Um, so in football, uh, Delone's going to be in a different class. Is that right? And you're pretty much guaranteed to make in the playoffs. Yeah, move down, move back down to single A. So we'll only have 
two more teams to compete against for districts. And Steele's not in single A anymore. They're Steel in double. Dub. Dub. I mean, they're, it's wide open. Yeah. Um, so, but you're all still as far as the York Adams League. That your division is pr pretty much the same, isn't it? Yes. So yeah. that's, that's what Hannah's a non-division game. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you'll play what Biglerville, Berm, Littlestown. Hanover. I'm doing the Littlestown preview for the Gettysburg Times. So, uh, what do you think of them? Anybody want to venture forth? I mean, it's always a good game. Like it's a rivalry. So. Yeah. I think we did the Littlestown Delone game. You guys <coughs> yeah. won. At it was. It was, was really, that was a really good yeah. game. Like yeah. Fourteen six or something it was, like that. Yeah. Fun. They're a good team, and every yeah. time we play them, they play us tough, and we play them tough. So, yeah, it is a good rivalry for sure. Corey, um, what do you got? You know, the the question that I I have intriguing is uh, JD, what's up with uh, this ten hit by pitches here? Well, you know, I'm, ten pr straight, JD. I'm pretty sure it was eleven. Eleven, okay. If I'm being honest, I'm pretty is sure. Is that it was a school 11. record? Do you keep it? <laughs> it's got to be. Um, it's, I'm not really one to crowd the plate, but you know. Six six three two forty. It's a lot of mass and takes up a lot of space. So if I'm gonna get a pitch that's gonna hit me, I'm I'll take my base. I'll take my OBP to go up. Yeah, just on the elbow. We're yeah. not you know talking about the ribs. So. Oh no, I we got shoulder, elbow, leg, knee. Yeah. I'll make a song I, out of it. I don't care where it takes. <laughs> I don't care where it hits me. I'll take just my base. Just on the face, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just the other. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You wear a helmet. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you bat right-handed, left-handed? I'm a lefty. Okay. So. Well, man, that's, so JD you know. was our catcher for the majority of the season. We started with Bree behind the plate, but then JD yeah. slipped in there, and he never lost his spot. Yeah. And uh, Coach Jack talked very highly of JD yesterday, mm -hmm. calling pitches, yeah. things yeah. like that. And we asked that question, who calls the pitches, and apparently they trust you to call, you know. I guess. Who has what stuff? And <laughs> I mean, when when I was a kid, and maybe Coach Smith and Coach Greenhold, we played basketball or baseball almost every day, and then it would be like football, and then basketball. I mean, we didn't have winter, spring, summer. We had football, basketball, baseball. Uh, and now, you know, I've I've been covering games. For, we used to have a county little league tournament, and then toward the end, I saw these kids out there. It looked like they want to be anywhere but on the ball field. They missed their devices. They were suffering from FOMO, whatever you want to call it. So you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. How do you find joy in playing baseball? Wouldn't you rather be home with your video <laughs> game and sitting on the couch? Well, right, tell me why. What is it about baseball that makes you want to get some fresh air? I think it's just the guys that you play baseball with because Sit, rather than sitting at home and texting them or whatever, you can go outside and play baseball. Yeah, you know, play uh, baseball with them. I'd also credit Coach Jimmy for actually making me want to come to practice, and making me actually want to play baseball, opposed to a lot of other coaches I've had in the past. Just goes through the motions, basically. Yeah. Like, hey, you know, there's go never, out there. There's never a dull moment on our baseball team. I'll <laughs> say that. Is there a rule about cell phones, no cell phones at practice, that kind of thing? We don't need to have that. Don't need they that. don't bring them. Right. Because you're either in the dugout, yeah. if they need them, they have them. Put you some know. music on, but besides that, we do free. practice with music. You know, it seems like the, the highs aren't high and the, the lows aren't low. You know, it's just you know, even kill. You know, you win eleven to five. All right, that's great. Let's just go back to the you know the ball field. You know, go back to the blueprint. You know, how can we get better? You know, you could. You know, have a six nothing game, but there's always stuff that you can work on, and that's what practice is all about. There, so um, now we talked about this yesterday. What's you know, like you know, role models? You know, with you know, kind of going around, like who do you think? You know, is it you know, professional athletes? Is it parents? You know, what was kind of drives you to play baseball? Or you can talk about those guys who were here yesterday too, the case um, the case are tuning in. I've played, especially with uh, Brady Deppenburn, I played baseball with him for probably about seven years now, just growing up with him. And he's always been a really good guy. And he's always someone who I admired. And especially when it comes to baseball, he is, I would say he's a role model for me. He's a great kid, great athlete who I look up to. 
I feel like all those seniors did a really good job showing us what it takes to lead a team and what it takes to get where you want to go. I mean, they won two district championships, first first team to do that. And I mean, they just, every, every day it was just keep a level head all the time, keep your composure and just, they led us to where we needed to be. It's not force upon either. It's, it just comes natural where yeah. it's not like they're even, you know, being a role model. It's just like, hey, you know, let's go out there and just, you know, shag a couple of fly balls in, in left field. It's, you know, hey, you just, you know, instead of, you know, showing up the swing, just, you know, do that there. It's just little things like that, you know, just builds up mm -hmm. to a overall roundabout team, you know. Yeah, they picked us up a lot, and that created good habits. We always were picking each other up after that, so and that was huge. Because we spent so much time together outside of baseball, we just knew how to help each other through difficult times during the season. Like, if someone wasn't hitting well, we knew how to talk to them so they weren't getting down on themselves. We knew how to pick each other up. There are little things, too, cleaning up after yourselves, cleaning, up the, cleaning out the dugout. I mean, are they allowed to have sunflower seeds or anything like that? I oh, mean, yeah, we have peanuts in the dog. Do, do you have to clean? The I mean, do, New Zealand them. rugby, the, the expression is sweep the sheds. It's not just a freshman thing. Like, everybody, everybody does it together. So yeah. that, there's that same ethos at the loan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After the game, sweep, a, sweep the dugout out. Everyone's on everything so we can get it done, get it done quick. And Take the flag down, fold the flag. Yep. Mm -hmm. No one's not doing something, so we're always busy. If we don't get it done, <laughs> it's just push-ups, bro. <laughs> Yeah, there's always a few people that slack off, but uh, it sounds like you don't have that issue. No. Well, Chris, he came from a different school and then came to DeLone, so he can, he can share his experience of the differences from where he came from to DeLone, if, yeah. if, if you care to share. I mean, at my old school, um, there's a lot of like rich kids there, um, and it was kind of divided. You'd have the higher seniors and then juniors, and they'd all kind of just hang out um, and then there's a few freshmen, but it was really just like segregated and there wasn't a lot of um, like, yeah, there wasn't a lot of like, Clicks. yeah, and uh, there's no hangouts um, and everybody would just kind of did their own thing and they were worried about what they did at the at bat and, you know, what the score was. Um, and the coaches there, there was a great coaching staff, but just the kids there were completely different from here. Um, and then when I transferred here, I was welcomed like right away. I knew some of the kids here. But then the first season, it was just kind of like I felt like I belonged here. Rather than at the other school, I just kind of felt like I was just showing up to practice, you know, hitting a few balls and then going home. It's almost like they're playing for the name on the back than the name on the front of the jersey. Like, let yeah. me just pad the stats. Let me, you know, get, you know, a three for four. Like, oh, look what I did, not look what the team did. That's, yeah. you know, kind of in that sense there. Yeah. I mean, a lot of those guys who were here last night are going to, continue to play baseball? Any of you have similar aspirations? Preston? <laughs> I got goals, yeah. You, Hopefully. You don't have a, it's early. Where you, it's, what, uh, six, at least six months till applications are due. Yeah. You're, every, everybody here is senior or mm. you guys are all seniors? Uh, These two are juniors. Juniors. Junior? Okay. So you got some time there. Jack and Matt are juniors. Okay. <laughs> Uh, anybody have any shout outs you want to uh, give encouragement to any of your teammates who might be watching? All the seniors, the seniors are watching. Thank you guys. That's heartfelt. And they, I know they've, when well, you were here yesterday with them, they seem like a quality group and we'll be hope, wishing them the best following their exploits as they move mm -hmm. forward. Uh, anything we haven't, uh, I mean, uh, Olympic swimming. Anybody, I mean, Katie Ledecky, how old is she? Pretty amazing. I believe 26 or 25, I think. Um, I'm not sure exactly. Like Jared, but but old, pretty old for a swimmer. Uh, and then Scotty Scheffler uh, with a 62 to win the gold. Yeah, you, you had Rahm. It real looked like tears. Yeah, it looked like Rahm was going to win it, and then he had a couple, uh, <coughs> he got a double bogey, a bogey, and, and it looked like Fleetwood's going to come in and, you know, kind of yeah. get it, you know, but, you know, got the bogey on 17 there, so. Yeah. They said uh, Rahm supposedly got $400 million to go with El Liv. Hard to turn down that kind of dough. But, but you know, it, it was entertaining, you know, yeah. just even with uh, Hideki, you know, he was up there, yeah. but, uh, 
you know, we're you know, closing down to the, the home stretch there with the Olympic sports there. We, we got a break, break dancing this, this week there. So that, Is that coming up? That's coming up. Is it too up. late to, get, to enter in the competition? I think it might be. <laughs> maybe 2028 we, we might be able to okay. you know, put our name in the ballot there. Oh, okay. there. But, uh, it's our, do they have a uh, duet? I, I think it's just solo. Oh, okay. you know, they just kind of do like their Blades dancing. of Glory or something. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but, uh, Pairs. Yeah, that's All right. it'd be interesting to see the, the rest of that there. But uh, any closing remarks before we? Uh... Any shout outs to anybody? Jack, you got anything to say? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> You've been saving it up. Matt, how about it? What do you got? I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> I know you're good, but do you have anything to say? <laughs> okay. I just want to give a shout out to my wife, Patty. Uh, without her allowing me to do this, yeah, it, it wouldn't be possible. And uh, she's a big time Oriole fan, and uh, she has me traveling around following the Orioles. We went out to Seattle this year to watch them play the Mariners, and then we went down to Oakland mm. in the same trip, and. Um, yeah, she, she could be the manager. She really loves the game. She knows all the players. She um, attends the games. I'm, I'm telling you. She Do you have like a tradition of snacks or anything like that? No, she don't let me eat peanuts in the living room. No, I mean, the yeah. players get anything. I mean, like, I guess that's Little League or something. They get something like that, yeah. The no, snacks she, she the just does a great job. You're on your own. Yep. So thank you, Patty. All right. Well, Squire football team, we wish you all the best. Thank you. And, uh, Squire baseball team, likewise. Hopefully you can get back in the mix, get another one of these. Corey, anything to say? No. Nope. Jack um, Greenhold, thank you so much for giving up your seat here at the panel. And uh, thanks to all you guys for hustling over here after practice. Mm -hmm. you thanks got for having us. Practice tomorrow? Yep. yep. What time? Three. Three? Three and you can't do two a day anymore. It's one a day. Oh, yeah. Next week. Next week. Next week. Yeah. Two a day. Well, it, the, you might get a break in the weather. <coughs> Today was hot. Yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah, I looked at the weather. That, it's supposed so. to be a, a little cold front coming in there, so it's supposed yeah. to be in the 80s there. Oh, so yeah. a nice cold front. That sounds great. All right, well, viewers, thanks so much for tuning in. We're going to have tri live trivia at 7. Uh, you players can uh, maybe take part. Worldwide bragging rights at stake. Uh, special thanks to Corey Smith and uh, Sean Garrett in the control room and all the Delano Catholic Squires, Coach Jimmy Smith, thank you. I'm Jeff Cook. See you next Tuesday and every Tuesday here on Sports Chat. Good night, everybody. Mahalo. <laughs>